Pretty good turnout here this morning. What are you going to do today? Prepare class. I, actually, I'm ahead for once in preparing huh? my classes. I'm ahead in preparing my classes for once. What are you talking about this week? Descartes and meditations. I never read much of Descartes. Really? He's one of the great, you think great person you should read, right? Yes. I, I think what so. shall I read? I'll read his Principles of Philosophy. Is it hard?
Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you everyone for wearing your facial coverings and please be aware to wear them over your nose and mouth while here. Please remain in your seats in order to practice social distancing and please no contact with anyone outside of your household at the Our Father. And there, at the time of offertory, or I'm sorry, there is no offertory. The basket is at the main entrance. And so as the Lord has gifted us with another day, let us stand and aware of his presence with us, not just here, but throughout the rest of the day, no matter where we may be. Let us give thanks and pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. In the gospel today, we'll remember what a good shepherd Jesus is. He knows his sheep and the sheep know him. We are the sheep. How well do we know Jesus? He knows us from head to toe. But how well do we know him when there is sin in our hearts, our actions, our relationships, our attitudes? That means we don't really know him as well as we should. So let us now admit that to ourselves, humble ourselves, and ask for forgiveness as we confess these sins. Lord Jesus, David reminds us in the psalm today about your mercy. And so taking advantage of this opportunity, now we do ask, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us all, forgive us our sins, and then bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. And let us continue in prayer. Almighty, ever-loving God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock gathered here today may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before and prepared a place for us. He who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all of the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are saved. The word of the Lord. Our response today is the stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my savior. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my savior. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his kindness endures forever. The stone the rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, See what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God? Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do not know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep, and mine know me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. May the Lord be with all of you. And now let us listen to a reading of the Holy Gospel of Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, a good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man, who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own, sees a wolf coming and he leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. But I am the good shepherd. I know mine. And mine know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold, but these also I must lead, 
and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We just don't get it. Really, we don't get it. Think of what we know about Christ. Four times in seven lines from this gospel, he reminds us he laid down his life for us, for you, for everybody. Christ laid down his life. Now, I know that makes us feel good. Wow, he thinks that much of me, he loves me that much that he would go to that extreme and lay down his life is very comforting. But he laid down his life for Herod and for Pontius Pilate. He laid down his life for the men who drove those nails into his hands and into his feet, and he died out of love and out of mercy and out of compassion for that soldier who pierced his side with a sword. Those are the kind of people he died for also, not just for us. But what does that say about us? Who are we willing to lay down our lives for? Who are we not willing to lay down our lives for? Think about this day and age in which the pandemic has hit. And but not just because of that, but other situations as well. We have those women and men who are firefighters, who lay down their lives. They don't even know who they're laying them down for, possibly. But that's their dedication, their commitment, their concern. Think about the women and the men who are in the police force. And they're out there laying down their lives. And it may involve a rapist, a murderer, a thief. But they're willing to lay down their lives because that's what they're all about, deep down within their heart and soul. Doctors and nurses during the pandemic Again, laying down their lives for people they don't even know, have no aware of who those people are. But they're willing to take that chance and to lay down their lives, and some have. If we are to follow Christ, again, who are you and you, you and I, ready and willing to lay down our lives for? And who would we say, no way in hell? And that's what it's all about. It's a hell of a decision that we have to make. It's easy to lay down our lives, you might say, uh, to give up or give in, whatever, for somebody that loves us, right? No problem if they love us back. But what if they don't? Well, if it's a small matter, you know, not really that earth-shaking, yeah, I can forgive them and, you know, I can somehow get through life, you know, with them or without them. What about those who have worked our heart out, who have destroyed our peace of mind, for those people that have just been such a case for, an instance of death for us because of the effect it has on us? Are you going to die for them? Are you going to die for them? Am I going to die for them? How about you? And most of us would probably, like myself, say, well, I really have to think about it. Yeah, give me time, Lord. I'll pray over it. The Lord says, you may not have time because they or you may not be here tomorrow. So you better decide that right now. If you really want to follow me, if you want to take up your cross, as Jesus is recorded as saying in the Gospels, are you ready to sacrifice? And sacrifice means pain. Sacrifice means something uncomfortable. Sacrifice means something that we would normally want to do, but we are asked to do by Jesus Christ if we really know him. 
if we really know him and want to follow him and take up the cross just as he did and sacrifice just as he did, we don't pick and choose who we will die for and who we won't die for, who we will give our all for and who we will hold back on. Wow. It's really difficult. It's really a challenge. Yeah, and it can be painful. And it doesn't depend on that other person. It doesn't depend on him or her and how they react or how they respond or whether they deserve it or whether they've earned it. That's not the point. Because we didn't deserve it when Christ died on the cross for us sinners. Do we get it? I wonder, do we really get it? Let us pray. Let us pray for those who have died. For Lenny Pereira, who is the son-in-law of Bud and Nancy Walt Wilcox, who died this week after a long struggle with ALS disease. For Josephine Bargnez, who was buried yesterday. For Alda Beltrami, who passed away this week. For them, for their eternal rest and their eternal peace. And for help and comfort for their family and friends, we pray to the Lord. Amen. We continue our prayers for Gary Schreck, Trudy Bauer, and all those whose names are on the parish list. We are asked to also continue our prayers for those who are ill in any way, especially for their recovery, for those who have surgery to look forward to. We pray in a special way for Deanna Schneider or anyone who now is looking for help and even for those who are ready to give birth to new life to a child. We pray to the Lord. For Ron Zaccanino, for whom we pray in a very special way as our intention at this Mass today, joining you, his family, and so many others who do miss him, myself included, for fish fries over at Wegmans, <laughs> <laughs> or wherever and however, but that we pray that obviously he be resting in the eternal peace of our Heavenly Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord. And any other prayers that some of you may have. Lord, hear our prayer. 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 And so, Lord, for all the prayers that we have heard here in this gathering, for all the prayers of those who are watching at home, for the prayers of all of us, Lord, who have such faith in you, who believe in your power of love and healing and forgiveness, we pray you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer. Taken from the fields and the work of human hands, it will become for us the very bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. 
the fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. And now let us pray and truly ask that what we do give to the Lord here at his table and elsewhere the rest of this day, everything we give will be found acceptable. May the Lord accept. Lord, grant we pray that we may always find delight in these Easter Paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us then may be the cause of our unending joy. This we ask in the name of Jesus, who lives forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord be with all of you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just. It's our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you praise and thanks, most loving God, especially in Christ Jesus, our Passover. For with the old order now having been destroyed, a universe cast down, having been renewed, an integrity of life restored to us in Christ. We, overcome with paschal joy, join every land, every people, every race, every language, all who exult in your praise, and even those heavenly powers with the angelic host, as we join together with them and so many throughout the world on this special day, as we now pray. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed by a friend and then entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving you thanks, he broke it, blessed it, he gave it to his disciples, including the one who betrayed him and the one who would deny him three times. He said, take this, all of you, eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And then in a similar manner, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, again giving thanks. He gave the cup to his disciples. He said, take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And now we proclaim that wonderful mystery of our faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and his resurrection, we offer you, God, the bread of life, as well as the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held each and every one of us worthy enough to be here with you this morning and to be able to minister to you. Humbly we pray that by partaking of the very body and blood of Christ, we may then be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your people throughout the whole world. We ask that you would continue to use Francis, our Pope, our Bishop, Mike, the women and the men who are leaders of all religions, all churches and denominations, that they will continue to be your instruments of justice, of peace and love throughout the world. We ask that in addition to Ron, that you remember all of our relatives and all of our friends who have passed, those who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died touched by your very mercy. Welcome them now into the light of your presence. 
Finally, we ask that you would have mercy on all of us so that then we would be able to join with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with her spouse, Joseph, with the apostles, with the martyrs, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. As we try to please you in this day and age, may we then merit to be co-heirs with them, especially to eternal life, and then we may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now as we pray to the God who is the God of all people, we now say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the second coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sin, but more importantly upon our faith, so we could share peace and unity here with one another, also with those at home, and then with you one day in heaven forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord's peace and his joy be with all of you. And now let us in one way or another share that wish of peace for one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are all of us now called to join in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. To let everyone know, we the Eucharistic ministers will be coming row by row. And to please receive the host in your hands and consume the host once the minister has moved to a different row. And then for dismissal, please remain in your seats until the usher indicates that it's time for leave, leaving. And we're going to be only using the doors of the main entrance, not over here. And a prayer especially with and for those who are at home right now. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ.
Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Did you want to take them over then to the tabernacle? I will. Okay. Josh is here oh, to do okay. that. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. A few announcements for today. First, for our students, the women's group, uh, UB Rudit, will be meeting for a last time this Tuesday on the 27th at 7 o'clock. They'll be meeting here at the Newman Center to have a party to celebrate the end of the semester. Uh, so you are invited to join them if you are a woman and you go to UB. Our Piense's reading group will be meeting for a second time this Friday, the 30th of April. We'll also be meeting at 7 o'clock here at the Newman Center. We are going to continue reading over Pascal's Piense's. And then finally for our students, uh, in two weeks, on the 7th of May, that's a week from this coming Friday, at 5 o'clock, we'll be having an end of the semester last day of classes cookout. Uh, so come uh, join us to celebrate the end of the semester, uh, to enjoy some hot dogs, some hamburgers, uh, to play trivia with us, and maybe to even have a bonfire. For our community members, sandwich, minist uh, sandwich ministry excuse me, will restart tomorrow on the 26th. Uh, they'll be meeting at 4.30 here at the Newman Center. Uh, please contact Eileen if you would like to volunteer. Also, for those of you who have faith sharing students who will be making their confirmation this year, the confirmation retreat is scheduled for the 5th of May at 6 o'clock. That will also be in person here at the Newman Center. And then finally, a few events for both our students and our community members. Uh, tomorrow, the 26th of April, at 5 o'clock, we'll be meeting outside the Newman Center uh, to pray a Divine Mercy Chaplet together as a way of uh, commemorating the coming end of the Easter season. So if you would like to come pray, pray with us, please come uh, join us outside the Newman Center tomorrow at 5. This Thursday, the 29th of April, we'll be uh, adding another video to our ongoing Thoughtful Thursday series. Uh, we'll be talking about contemplation and the memento mori. And then lastly, uh, the 7th of May, again, that's in two weeks, at noon, we'll be restarting our communion services with Deacon Mike. So uh, in two Fridays and then every week after that, we will again be having communion services here at the Newman Center on Fridays. Uh, those will start at noon. Thank you very much. And Eileen, it's five o'clock for making the sandwiches on Monday? Okay, five o'clock. And now let us stand in prayer. Kind shepherd, look upon us, your flock. Be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep that you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord be with all of you. May God bless us all, not just now, but throughout the day, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.